Oxford from the inside. The good, the bad, but always the truth. Hi, I'm Anna. Welcome to a new episode of Oxford from the inside. The good, the bad, but always the truth. Today we're joined by Carol and Julia and we're going to talk about the German society. Would you maybe like to introduce yourselves? Um, sure, I'll go first. I'm Carol, a first year studying PPE at Trinity College and I'm originally from Berlin. And I'm Julia, um, also a first year studying law in Pembroke College and I'm originally from a tiny, tiny village um, in the Saarland, which is a county of Germany at the German-French border. Again, thank you very much um, to both of you for being here today. Um, the first question I came up with is, um, so what does the GEM Society do? What is the GEM Society? Um, since you're both involved in the GEM Society in the committee, um, I figured that would be a good question to start with. So Julia, if you maybe want to go first. Um, yeah, so I think the German Society actually covers quite like a broad range of like activities and events. Um, so I think the two main focuses are um, speakers. Um, so for example, our next events are with a very famous politician or lawyers, or generally we've had Thomas de Maizière, Christian Lindner. Um, so all kinds of sort of educative events um, all online right now, but we're hoping to do them in person again soon. And then on the other side, which I'm sure Carl would tell you more about because she's a social events officer. So we organize all sorts of social events that are related to German culture, but obviously that take place in Oxford. I think very famous. We have Kaffee und Kuchen uh, once a term and also the famous Oktoberfest um, for all good for all Germans in Oxford that are missing out on the normal Oktoberfest. Um, but we also do uh, all sorts of other things. We organize research uh, synopsium, so community-based things. So really loads of stuff to get involved in. That was a really nice pitch, thank you. Um, Carol, <laughs> do you maybe have um, anything to add or did Julia just cover everything? Um, maybe one short thing for those of you out there who don't actually speak German yet. We do offer German language classes. So German society is very much not just for Germans in Oxford, but for anyone who is in general interested in German culture. And yeah, I think I can go more into detail about what we specifically do later, I think. Uh, yeah, I think that was really good to add because I think also because they've been online over the last two terms. Um, it's actually had a really wide reach and lots of also like alumni of the GEM Society were able to take part. Um, so yeah, I think that's really cool. Um, so my next question would be, um, what motivated you um, to get involved in the GEM Society or more, uh, more broadly, just like in a society in general at Oxford, because there are so many. Um, Carol, if you would maybe like to go first this time. Um, yeah, sure. So um, for German society, I think when I arrived here, I kind of, I became more aware of being German myself. And I kind of, I liked, you know, talking to people who were also German or who had similar experiences to mine because, you know, coming to the UK from Germany. And so that initially drew me to the German society. And then I really liked um, kind of the events they put on, they did a really good job organizing online socials as well during Michaelmas and Hillary term. And kind of the more I got to know the society and the wide range of projects they do and events they offer, um, that kind of motivated me to get involved as well. And I think for societies in general, societies are one of the greatest things in Oxford because they're such a great opportunity to kind of further explore an interest that lies out of your academic field or even within your academic field and meet people from other colleges and kind of to balance out um, all your degree work. Um, so yeah, that was my motivation. Uh, thank you, Julie, how about you? I'm very, very similar to Carol. Um, I think what would be quite fun to mention is that I think um, Carol and I, we met on like the on my first evening in Oxford on this thing organized by the German society. Um, yeah, so similar to Caro, I really enjoyed the events and the sort of work that the German society did. And um, yeah, I really enjoyed their events and participated in lots of them. And I just thought it would be quite nice to give back. And again, I've, um, I've also been like going to schools abroad and I think I've become more, um, yeah, aware um, of being German while I was abroad. And I just think it's a really nice way to sort of 
feel at home while being abroad when you connect with others and you know try to integrate German culture and yeah do some cultural um, exchange I think I think it's just a really nice way yeah yeah I, I would say I agree it's um, I think once you move to a different country you kind of feel like you sometimes need to just speak to someone maybe in German or to talk about just similar experiences so I would um, I would agree that the German society is like a really cool place to just you know meet people who are from Germany but also not everyone's from Germany as Carol mentioned earlier like it's very much a society for everyone if you're just like interested in German culture um, so yeah um, you've both talked a lot about um, lots of different events that have been going on um, so my next question would be um, actually it's two questions um, first what's your favorite memory in the society so far if there's like any specific um event or something that was going on that you would say that's probably the most special thing um and also since you're both um currently on the committee um if there's anything that you're planning right now that you're very much looking forward to um yeah if julia would maybe like to go first on this one uh, yeah, sure. Um, so I think in terms of my favorite memory, obviously, because everything has been online so far, um, I'm pretty sure if we'd had Oktoberfest, that would be like my first pick. Um, but so far, I've just really enjoyed um, their speaker events. Um, they also had a career event with the um, Auswärtiges Amt, which I found super helpful because I was really thinking about it. So um, I wouldn't say I have one pick, but just generally like the breadth of speakers. And I just think that really sort of added to my experience at Oxford and yeah, gave me some new perspective. And then um, what I'm looking forward to uh, the most is also a speakers event, um, which um, I'll be co-hosting and it's with um, Dr. Mehmet Daimagula. I hope I'm pronouncing his name right. <laughs> and he was, he was the victim's lawyer in the NSU trials. And obviously, because I'm studying law, I'm just so excited for this event and getting to know like such a cool person. And I just never like one year ago, I'd never thought that, you know, I'd be interviewing this guy. Um, so, yeah, I'm just I'm really looking forward to it. Sort of nervous, but, you know, it's going to be fine. <laughs> You'll be great. Um, so, yeah, Carol, what about you? Um, I think for me, I really liked in, in Michaelmas term what they offered was a program called German Families. Um, where you could kind of, you were matched up with different society members throughout Oxford, which I really liked as kind of help to ease into Oxford life. Um, and then I think as well, I, I've been really impressed with how well German society has handled the pandemic because I know Zoom socials can be so depressing and Zoom online events, but somehow mm -hmm. the German society ones have been actually enjoyable um, and like really, really nice ways uh, to spend your Thursday evenings, which is, which honestly surprised me. Um, and what I'm excited for right now, though, is because uh, restrictions are currently easing. So we're, we're planning a revival of Kaffee and Kuchen, really I mentioned this event earlier, which is like German society's staple event. Um, once a term, they offer like cake and coffee for um, members. And this time we're doing it picnic style. Um, Uh, the, this term we're doing a picnic style in groups of six and social distance and yeah I'm really looking forward to that. Thank you I'd agree that they've been doing a really good job with um, like online socials as well. Um, I remember that maybe like seventh week or eighth week of Hillary which is the second term at Oxford um, we did like an easter egg painting yeah. which was quite cool because they delivered yeah. They actually delivered like paint and like brushes and everything to everyone who was in Oxford. Um, so I think that was a nice way to just like catch up with people as well. Um, yeah. yeah, that was great work by the committee. <laughs> um, my next question, maybe a bit more on the like technical side, because um, it, 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 I mean, being in a society is quite a lot of work. Um, so the question would be like, um, how do you manage uh, with, you know, your workload that you've got from your studies and working in the committee? Um, and yeah, would you recommend um, getting involved in societies or is there anything that you think you should um, take into consideration before like running for extra positions? 
Um, I don't know who went first last time. Um, so maybe just Carol? I think it's my turn, yeah. Okay. Um, so I think in general, what I was told early on by like people in older years was that your degree is going to take up as much time as you let it. So if you don't have anything else going on, you can spend all your time working on your degree because there's always more you could do. Um, but I think most of us, or if not all of us, do kind of need need some something to balance that out. And so for that reason, I obviously recommend, you know, if you're if you know you've got a busy term ahead and you're looking at a commitment that's going to be one term, maybe consider not doing it this term, but a term after awards or something. Um, so like do kind of keep keep in sight what you what you've got planned ahead. Um, but I think I've spoken to people across various subjects, like, you know, because some subjects have a higher workload and some have a lot less work. Um, and I think I think medics are considered to have a very high workload and a lot of medics I've spoken to have said, well, yeah, but they still, they still manage to fit it in and they're glad they do um, because otherwise their degree like would take up an overwhelming amount of time. Um, so I definitely recommend that. I think it is possible for most people. I do recommend kind of planning ahead. And also if you have your commitment, like um, making sure that you're always communicating clearly. So I think the general consensus is that your degree comes first. Everybody's here to study and do well. So if you know you're gonna have a busy time with your degree, you have a stressful week ahead, people are gonna understand like on the committee you're on, but you need to tell them ahead of time. Like if you know this week, you're not gonna be able to do much, Say it, say it as soon as you know it, and there will be a way to figure it out. What kind of sucks is if you don't, like, if at the last minute when it should be done, you're like, oh, I'm sorry, I, I can do this. Um, but yeah, that being said, I think clear communication, planning ahead, and then it should work and it's really rewarding and fun. Yeah, thank you. Um, Julia, what about you? How do you, how do you plan ahead? Um, how do you manage? Um, yeah, so actually I want, I just wanted to sort of build on what Carol said. Um, so I applied for the German society position um, while having like mod ex mods exams for law. Um, so I was literally like three weeks before my exams, there was like the big um, general meeting, which took like four hours, um, which for everyone else was super tiring. But for me, it actually sort of felt refreshing because literally before I was so focused on my exams that I didn't really do anything else. Um, and just like having, getting your head really wrapped around something else and just not thinking about exams for three hours. That, that was something I hadn't done before apart from when I was sleeping really. Um, so I was really, I felt refreshed. And the next day I think I was as productive as I hadn't been for a couple of weeks. Um, so yeah, like Caro has said, your degree will take as much time as you let it. And I think if you have a commitment in a society that you really enjoy and that you're genuinely interested in, that will only help you to focus on your academic work even more and be more maybe productive in even a short amount of time. That makes sense. And obviously also make your time in Oxford a lot more enjoyable. I think there are, and there's so many societies, literally an endless amount. Um, there's something for everyone. And I just think that if you wouldn't take advantage of this, um, you'd be missing out on a huge part of Oxford life. Um, so yeah, I really do think that it's worth making that time for and that I think it's even super possible. And again, when I had exams, um, especially like at the beginning of my role, that was a bit stressful, yeah, but also um, the people were super understanding. I just had to communicate like, hey, maybe can we move the transition period a week later, which wasn't a problem at all. So again, like how I said, it's all about communication and then I think it's perfectly manageable. Yeah. Um... As you, as you mentioned, there's so many societies in Oxford. And I think if, I mean, if, if there isn't one and you would like there to be one, you're always free to set it up. I mean, we're currently in the process of launching a society ourselves. So um, yeah, you can, you can, you can always, um, if you feel like there's a society that um, you would like there to be, you can, yeah, you can always find people who are interested as well and just launch the society. Um, you obviously have to contact the students union. There's a bit of paperwork, um, but yeah, you're free to uh, form a society yourself if uh, you're interested in it. And I would maybe also add that societies are a great way of getting to know people from other colleges as well. Um, because I think a lot of your social life just takes place 
in in college, uh, which is like I guess natural because that's where your tutorials are, it's where you live, so it's natural that most of your friends will be from your colleges. But I think that being in a society is a yeah, it's just a cool way to get to know people from other colleges a bit a bit better and maybe easier as well. Um, especially this year, I guess, because everything's been online. So um, yeah. Then the last question I'd have for you guys is um, how, yeah, how does the GEM Society uh, reach out to, to applicants or maybe even to offer holders? Um, is, there, is there anything that someone who's currently maybe watching this video thinking about applying to Oxford uh, from Germany um, or who already has a place um, and has any questions? Um, yeah, just and uh, does the GEM Society kind of help in that way as well? Um, I think, Julia, it's your turn. Yeah, I think it's my turn. Um, yeah, so we're actually quite exciting um, working on a with Project Access right now to sort of increase our reach to offer holders. Because I think so far we've been doing sort of a lot of things for offer holders. Um, so, for example, I at least remember that last year and I'm currently doing, trying to organize that. Um, we always try to have like group chat. Um, for German freshers. And then um, we usually also do the family scheme, which Kara already mentioned, where you as a German fresher or incoming offer holder can sign up um, to be a child of um, one or two parents, uh, which are already studying at Oxford. And again, I also really enjoyed that and I participated and yeah, um, got some really good connections after that. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, um, <laughs> I met my boyfriend uh, for everyone else here um, through the family scheme. Um, yeah, no, I think so all in all, I think we've got a quite good thing on offer. Um, but yeah, watch out for some exciting things coming out about um, Project Access. And I think it's all based on our website. We also have a little um, letter for freshers. Um, where loads of logistical issues are explained with credit cards, all those things that are really confusing or confused me like a year ago when I was coming. It was also overwhelming. And I think that's just a really nice guy to also watch out for. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think I have a lot to add. Just if you're watching this and you're an incoming fresher and you're interested, if you Google Oxford German Society, our website is the first thing that comes up and you can like go through everything in your own time and find all the details as well. Um, and yeah, we've got a community officer as well who is also specifically working on expanding the German Society community, community and outreach. So good stuff coming. Thank you, that is um, very insightful. Um, so before we uh, come to the end of this episode, um, is there anything else that um, any of you guys would like to, to add, to mention, um, any supporting words, or if not, it's fine, okay? Um, I was just wondering before we, um, before we come to the end of this episode. Um, I just, because I'm working as a marketing, of, marketing officer and as you can't, like, as you can tell, I, I love a good pitch and I love some advertising. So if you're listening, watching this and uh, you're interested in any of the activities of the German Society, make sure to follow us on Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, all social media that you can have. Um, we do put a lot of work into the publishing of the sort of things there and um, you'll be super informed about like events that are happening and yeah. Facebook, Facebook, oh, Facebook. Oh, especially, especially, especially for Germans Facebook. watching this. I don't know about you, but before I came to Oxford, I thought Facebook died in 2013. Well, you know, it didn't die, but effectively died. But Facebook is a really, 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 really big thing. And if you want to or not, you're going to have a Facebook by second week of Michael's term. Um, so you might as well get it over with and start following German society there already or liking, liking. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That, was, that was very surprising. Um, I think that was also one of the first things I was told, uh, make a Facebook account. I, I didn't have one. I think most of the German people who applied yeah. didn't have one. Yeah, I didn't everything have one. Oxford, yeah, everything in Oxford is just via Facebook. That's how you, that yeah, that's just how you get notice of all sorts of events. So yeah, that was, yeah, definitely very important. Yeah. So, There's no point in resisting. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah um that's all we have time for today thank you very much both for joining um and for sharing your experiences both from oxford and uh, the germ society 
Also, thank you to our followers uh, who are either listening to this podcast um, or watching this video on uh, YouTube um, or Instagram. Remember to follow our Instagram at Oxford from the inside um, and to check our Facebook page for regular updates. Um, I hope you stay safe and well and until next time. Bye. Bye.